Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mount Joy High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC Birthday Ball, commemorating the 248th anniversary of the founding of Mark World. Please launch your cell phones and rise. The Sergeant Major Clark delivers the Marine Corps. Let's pray. Almighty Father, whose command is over all, and whose love never fails, make me aware of thy presence and obedience to thy will. Keep me true to my best self, guarding me against dishonesty in purpose and in deed, and help me to live so that I can face my fellow Marines, my loved ones in thee, without shame or fear. Protect our families and protect our cadets. Give me the will to do the work of a Marine and to accept my share of responsibilities with vigor and enthusiasm. Grant me the courage to be proficient in my daily performance. Keep me loyal and faithful to my superiors and to the duties my country and the Marine Corps have entrusted to me. Make me considerate of those committed to my leadership. Help me to wear my uniform with dignity and let it remind me daily of the conditions that I am to uphold. If I am inclined to doubt, stay my faith. If I am tempted, make me strong to resist. If I should miss the mark, give me the courage to try again. Guide me with the light of truth and grant me wisdom by which I may understand the answer to my prayer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Senior Marine Instructor from Mount Juliet Marine Corps Junior ROTC, Major Tilly. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the 248th celebration of the Marine Corps birthday. Uh, you are going to witness the same exact ceremony that active Marine, active and reserve Marine units from around the world uh, engage in to celebrate this uh, this great occasion. Uh, so definitely, uh, please enjoy yourselves. I'd like to recognize a few individuals and a few folks here tonight. Um, tonight is uh, Mr. Hill's uh, first birthday ball as president. As president, yes, yeah, sorry. As uh, principal of Mount Juliet High School. So uh, let's give him an answer for his tremendous support. Of our uh, we also have uh, Miss Jamie Farrow from Jones, uh, Zone Seven from our school board here with us tonight. Appreciate you coming out. Thank you for And we've also got some, uh, some faculty, uh, staff, and uh, we also have our uh, Army, Marine, and Navy recruiters with us this evening. So, a uh, round of applause for these folks and here's your support. <laughs> and you probably just want me to do this, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, all of the efforts that you see here tonight began about three months ago, uh, from planning to rehearsals and drills, and uh, this is all Sergeant Major Clark's baby, and he's extremely good at it. So uh, a big round of applause for him for putting this all together. <laughs> uh, lastly, uh, today also happens to be Veterans Day. Um, just happens to fall on the same day this year. So if you are or have ever served, please stand up. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the cadets. Enjoy the ceremony. Thank you for coming. As you enter this banquet hall, you may have noticed that before us tonight is an empty chair and a single long table draped in black, signifying all of our fallen comrades who are not with us this evening because they have given the full measure of devotion to our country and to our beloved Lord. A single lighted candle reminds us of the flame of eternal life and that the memory of our fallen comrades will be with us always. The purple heart of battle is displayed to reflect the sh shedding of blood and the ebb of life in battle. The identification tags are blank. Yet they could bear the name of many of us here tonight. Only a few Americans choose the dangerous and necessary work of fighting our nation's enemies. As a cons consequence of that choice, some have paid the ultimate price, joining the honorable of heroes who build the noble legacy of our war. 
For those of us who carry on that legacy, it is our obligation to honor those Marines. As Marines we gather in celebration of our history, we gather in the shadows of greatness. Though our fallen can no longer participate in our traditions, they will always be a part of us and who we are. Please rise for a moment of silence for our fallen comrades. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, a video message from the Commandant and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. To this day, young men and women choose to raise their right hand and swear an oath to something greater than themselves. Combat is ugly. You see, I don't like this. You're not going to flash me. Oh, yeah. He's gone. How you know? He was laying. Because he was laying, laying right there. He's not there no more. He was laying up I shot him like five times when I came back. If you think combat is great, then you haven't been there. So we were taking fire all day long. Lieutenant Calvin bent over to grab his radio. A tracer round came through the left armhole of his flak jacket and out the right armhole had just barely pe penetrated the skin. Crazy thing was that when he was a young enlisted Marine, he got a tattoo on his back that said Marine, and the tracer underlined the word Marine. That's the kind of story that people won't believe unless you show it to them. I've been shot a few times and blown up and stabbed. I owe my life to Navy corpsmen, those are unsung heroes. When you're in a battle and you're wounded, but you know you can still pull a trigger, the thing that keeps you going is the man to your left and the man to your right. Since its birth, the Marine Corps has sought to find those exceptional individuals who embody the qualities of toughness, grit, honor, courage, and commitment qualities required of a professional warfighting force that is not only capable, but willing to do the hard things on behalf of the nation. Victory in every climb and place does not happen by chance. From the unforgiving jungles of the South Pacific, to the snow-covered mountains of Korea, to the bloody streets of Wei and Fallujah, Marines have prevailed because they had moral courage, steel backbones, and a ruthless commitment to a tradition of excellence. And with preparation comes confidence. The more prepared you are, the more you rehearse, the more you, you drill, the more confident you get. And so we're ready to go. The Marine standard is the only standard, and discipline is the currency of our core. This is the bedrock of our ethos, and what makes us unique from any other fighting force in the world. Discipline and being lethal, I see it every single day from the fire team to the squad to the platoon level when the Marines are running up recon, running through the low trail, going to the dojo, making themselves more lethal and fit. And that directly correlates 
you when we go do, you know, Rangers 400 or do a company clip assault. That's only going to continue to bleed on when they go overseas and take care of business. Today, we continue to prepare for the next fight. And while the faces, weapons, and formations are new, the fighting spirit of the individual Marine has never changed. When the nation calls and the orders given to send in the Marines, every friend and every foe understands that help or destruction is on the way. Right now we have more capabilities than uh, we ever had in the past, from weapon systems, platforms, and technology to able to be lighter and faster and more lethal. As Marines, we do not decide when the next fight will come, but we do decide who wins. The Marines who came before have paved the way. They prevailed against all odds, in the face of unimaginable hardship, and yet they kept their humanity. They kept their honor clean. The character of war will change. The battlefield will evolve and the equipment will modernize. But the warrior ethos of our Corps stands firm. We do not simply say that we're first to fight. We work hard every day to prove it. To our adversaries, I would say if you see that US Marines and you see that MARPAD, I would say you better stand by. Because if you don't think these Marines are working every single day to better their craft and skills, you got another thing coming. Because these Marines aren't going to stop until the mission is accomplished and you're destroyed. It's funny when you're a, a Lance Corporal and you got combat action, Navy Unit Commendation, Marine Corps Expedition Air Medal, and a sea service, and they look at you like, where have you been? Nowhere. I just went where the Marine Corps sent me. We are people who are dedicated to the service to others. If there's somebody that's in trouble, a Marine is not going to turn and walk away. They're going to do whatever's necessary it, to the point of giving their life. Admiral Chester Nimitz said about Iwo Jima, uncommon valor was a common virtue. The stories I hear at reunions should be on Silver Star citations. The Marine Corps history is very important, and I'm glad that it's still being taught. I'm glad that my fellow Marines that didn't come back are being remembered, are being discussed in squad base to this day. Marines are tough. I think there's something about a young man or young woman who comes into the Marine Corps that they perhaps were born with and didn't even know it. You can do it. You can do it all. Um, you are capable more than you think, and there are so many people in the Marine Corps who want to enable that. You're now fighting for your brothers and sisters. What was common then, and from what I can tell what's common now, is uh, the camaraderie. Uh, you watch my back, I'll watch your back. You don't want to let people down on either side of you. There's no better thing than camaraderie, and talking through it and sharing certain pieces with individuals because it creates a bond that is unbreakable. Everybody wants to be a champion. Everybody really wants to be part of the best. Marines, you are the strength of our Corps. And your actions determine the fate of millions of future warriors and their ability to stand on your shoulders. I know that you're ready. As we come together to celebrate our 248th birthday, I encourage every Marine to reflect on our history and think about the moment when you ask yourself, do I have what it takes? You are on a journey that few have dared to begin. Take pride in what you represent. You are the pinnacle of professional warriors and the model for others to follow. Sergeant Major Ruiz and I are proud to stand among you and we'll be with you every step of the way. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Marines, and Semper Fidelis. We're Marines till we die. And we require two week notice for that.
gentlemen, please rise for the entry of the official party and the guests of honor. Remain standing for the march on the colors, singing for our national anthem, and the entry of the traditional birthday cake.
On November 1st, 1921, John A. Lejeune, 13th Commonwealth of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the court be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Since that day, the men and women of our Corps have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores, in war and peace. On this birthday of the Corps, therefore, in recognition of the will of the 13th Commonwealth, a reminder of the Corps' honorable service is published as follows. On November 10th, 1775, a Corps of Marines was created by a resolution of Continental Congress. Since that date, many thousand men have borne the name Marine. In memory of them, it is fitting that we who are Marines should commemorate the birthday of our Corps by calling to mind the glories of its long and illustrious history. The record of our Corps is one which will bear comparison with that of the most famous military organizations in the world's history. During 90 of the first 146 years of its existence, the Marine Corps has been in action against the nation's foes. From the Battle of Trenton to the Argonne, Marines have won foremost honors in war, and in the long eras of tranquility at home, generation after generation of Marines have grown gray in war in both hemispheres and in every corner of the seven seas, that our country and its citizens might enjoy peace and security. In every battle and skirmish since the birth of our Corps, Marines have acquitted themselves with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion until the term Marine has come to signify all that is highest in military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldierly repute we who are Marines today have received from those who have preceded us in the Corps. With it, we have also received from them the eternal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation and has been the distinguishing mark of the Marines at every age. So long as that spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal to every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And the men of our nation will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served as soldiers of the sea since the founding of the Corps. John A. Lejeune, Major General, United States Marine Corps, 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps. The timeless message of our 13th Commandant has left its mark in the hearts and minds of all Marines, past and present. By deed and act, from Bella Wood to the Oregon, from Guadalcanal to Iwo Jima, from Incheon to the Korean Armistice, from the hard fights in Vietnam to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, to this century's longest wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and in hundreds of other places where Marines have distinguished themselves. Marines have continued to epitomize those qualities which are their legacy. The successors of men and women who have earned the title Marine have achieved in combat, and the faith they have borne in peace will endure forever. The Commandant and our many friends have added their hearty praise and congratulations on this, our 248th birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, it is customary at Marine Corps birthday celebrations worldwide for Marines to cut a traditional cake in celebration of the birth of our illustrious Corps.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of the colors and the march off of the official party. Remain standing for the playing of the Marine Tent.
to my junior cadets. Take advantage of all the time you have left in high school. I know you're here this all the time, but it will be over sooner than you expect. This program is ultimately here for you and your success. Take all the lessons you learned here and improve from them. Take the initiative to seek responsibility and allow yourself to be developed. In doing so, you'll see yourself improve and grow. Seniors, our time together is almost up. Thank you for always supporting me inside and outside of Gerald TC. Let's use the rest of the time we have together to pass down all the knowledge we've gathered for the past four years to the cadets we lead. Not to inflate our own egos, but to ensure the success of the program that has given so much to us and its future leaders. To all my cadets, you're all an outstanding group of young men and women. You have all molded me into the person I am today. Thanks to you, I've become a better leader, a better follower, and overall, a better person. Thank you. To the cadets on the drill team, thank you for the countless hours you spent preparing for this ceremony. I know it wasn't easy waking up every morning affecting the same sequence of events, but if you put in half the effort you put into this ceremony, there is no doubt in my mind that you'll be successful in your upcoming drill meets and performances. Thank you, and happy birthday, Marines. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, Tristan Goodell. Tristan Goodell saved and served in the Marine Corps JROTC program here at Mount Julia High School. He graduated in 2020 after serving on the marksmanship team and in several buildings during his time in the program. Upon graduation, he was hired by Grade 8 Construction where he worked until he was old enough to apply for law enforcement. He was accepted into the academy and graduated as a Tennessee State Trooper in March of this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our guest of honor, Trooper Tristan Goodell.
At this time, Sergeant Major Clark will deliver our closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, although this concludes the formal ceremony, we are highly encouraging all cadets and their families to remain on hand to socialize, build a variety, and spread the court. There's going to be plenty of birthday cake, there's going to be plenty of service, we're all going to get checked up on Mountain View, and our cadets are going to place the duty. When the music hits, it's the dance floor. Thank you for being part of this special evening. God bless the United States of America. Success to her dreams and happy 248th birthday.